So you might be in John Lewis looking at the DC3100. You might be at a Janome sewing machine dealer looking at the DG8100. Or like me, you might have popped over to Hobbycraft and you're looking at their 8100 HC or HC, wait, 8100. But essentially, they're all the same machine. Now, I picked this up at um, Hobbycraft at their standard price of £260. Had I gone to John Lewis for the same machine, I would have been paying £429. And in the Janome dealership, I would have been paying £349. So now, with Janome, their machines are covered for two years. Now, I have had lots of feedback from lots of people who have sent machines away to Janome. It will take weeks to get a machine back, which is such a shame because their machines, for me, are generally very good and I'm quite pleased and happy to recommend them and if you go to a local dealer not all of them service your machine so always take the time to find out about the place where you're buying your machine but really this video is about this machine and I want to see what's inside the box so let's have a look so do you know me have been around for a very long time in the UK uh, a Japanese company they are very reliable winning quite a lot of awards throughout the years. Now the first thing you get are the details for the machine, including a nice plastic bag for them with a manual. Have a look through the manual. This will save you a lot of trouble in the long run. We've got a plastic bag for a plastic cover. Right, there we go. Not a really good experience. Right, there's the foot pedal, foot control. It's its own pedal and we've got a plug for the mains. And here and there are the accessories. Okay, we'll open those up and have a look inside. Let's get the machine up and this go. The pedal, it's a, a standard Janome pedal with a one pin plug. You won't need the pedal, which is why it's separate because you can use the start stop button. So if you're in a wheelchair, for example, I like to have my machine a little bit away from the edge of the table. So to measure the length of the cable. So the cable measures 170 centimeters, which is great because your table is generally about 75 centimeters off the floor. So you get the standard foot on the machine already and so the standard foot does zigzag stitch but you get in here as well as an extra bobbin already loaded in the machine you get an additional three bobbins you have a spindle that means you can do twin needle stitching you have a seam ripper in there so place that on the bottom so that you've got a nice long handle you've got some organ needles ha really just means household needle so those domestic needles so don't be too caught up with what the ha is they've given you a satin applique foot there so those embroidery stitches you can actually see um, through the foot you've got a zip foot that's the standard zip foot e you have a screwdriver you have here a spool cap large and a small and a piece of felt for your thread a brush to clean your machine the power is 35 watts so it's not a hugely powerful machine but then you know you don't need to have a lot of power on um these kind of machine because of the dc motor that's inside it's usable for all levels of sewers so beginners intermediates and um professionals and it does do all types of fabrics if you have a look on the John Lewis website. So that's your stretch fabrics and your denim. If I switch the machine off and then switch it back on, when I switch it back on, I'm going to press the needle up and down button at the same time. So press that down, switch the machine on. Now what comes up is a timer facility. So this is how many hours, so this one represents the number of hours in which the machine after no use will switch itself off. So I can increase that. It comes default at seven. So after, say, you've left the machine on all day, it will switch itself off. Or you can go all the way up to 12 hours, or you can choose to have the machine switched off. So it doesn't switch off itself at all at any point. And then all you do is press start, stop, 
and the machine's ready. What a cool feature. Okay, and the way to alter the numbers on here, press up. Um, you can use these arrows to indicate which um, number you want to alter. Change the line over to the width of the stitch and we can go up to seven millimeters. So that seven represents millimeters and that's how wide the, the stitches will swing in the zigzag foot. When you fill in the bobbin on the machine, you push the bobbin over to the guide and immediately the screen will move over to show you that the bobbin is in play. I've got the pedal plugged in, so I've got the pedal signal there. So if I press the pedal and just go, I have the speed at full control. It doesn't sound impressively fast. And if I just stop there and unplug the pedal, the pedal sign moves. And then if I just press start and stop, and that's the maximum speed. So it's not very fast, the machine. So for a beginner or a child, this machine would be perfect. But if you're intermediate or advanced, you might find it a bit painstakingly slow. Right, I've got enough on there, so I'll stop there. The machine is installed with a needle threader, so needle threaders only work with needles above 70, 75. So they've provided you with three size 14. Now 14 is quite a big needle, it's a 90. So that's for thick fabrics like denim. Um, so a downside is why haven't they given us a good range? We just take the needle out of the machine and I want to see what they've installed. Okay, so it seems that the needle installed is a size 90, which is a 14. So the machine has a, a really good comprehensive needle plate. It comes in imperial measurements and millimeter measurements, so not centimeters. And that again is great for a beginner. So if you're left-handed or if you're sewing in a particular way, having the measurements on the left-hand side of the needle um, is also really handy. There's a lot of machines that have decorative stitches and some with only buttonholes. You have this plus and minus uh, screw here and that balances your stitches. So sometimes what happens is your decorative stitches might be a bit more prominent on your left side or on the right side. You can adjust this screw and you've got the screwdriver with your machine and you can just make the adjustment that you need to balance out your stitches. But you can use it to your advantage. Now, if I stitch this stitch, so that's what stitch 60 should look like. So we'll pop that back in. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust over to the plus a little bit it doesn't go the full turn and if I stop there for a minute I'll move it over to the minus so that was when we moved the adjustment over to the plus and it brought the stitches closer together moving it over to the minus, it moved them further apart. So you can use this machine um, adjustment just to your advantage. It doesn't have to be um, just to fix the balance of the stitches. So if I turn the machine round, what we have here is a switch that will lower the feed dog. So let's slide that along. The feed dogs disappear under the needle plate. And that gives me the freedom to sew free motion embroidery or applique. And I can go in any direction. I'm not constricted by the feed dogs feeding the machine, feeding the fabric to the back. So the way to get the feed dogs active again is just slide that switch over and turn the hand wheel and they're re-engaged again. Now, when you get the machine hidden inside the accessories box, um, a well-kept secret, it's your buttonhole foot.
Now this auto lock button is really handy because what you can do is have combination of stitches. So if I choose a stitch, I've just chosen a random one there. What I can do is just press start, start. Just sew the first stitch. Press the auto lock and then select a different stitch. Press the auto lock and it will only stitch one and it will only stitch one stitch. So it can go back again and then stitch that stitch, press the auto lock and just keep doing this. It's a bit tedious because it doesn't have a memory feature. So something you will use to stop the fabric from fraying. So when you've got a raw edge like this, you can just select, I've chosen 29. I'm going to position my fabric in such a way so it will sew the edge. And this looks really good because you can see what you're doing. So it's really good. So you do have a sort of, not an overlocker finish, but an overcast finish, which is a simple. Now sewing over denim, this machine's handled that pretty well. So I've had my mock waistband, so I've got four layers of fabric there, but then I flipped this over. So that's seven layers and there isn't a problem with the stitching. So this has handled the denim pretty well. Now I'm using stitch 16, which is the recommended stitch for stretch fabric. I have a bright yellow on this blue. Okay, so that's the recommended stitch for knit fabric or stretch fabric. I've used a stretch needle, the 75, and this is actually for stretch fabric, rather than using their blue tip, but it's the same size and it has the same tip. So I've not received the great results that's promised. Um, I'm a little bit disappointed. I mean, the stretch is fantastic. It's there, but the fabric looks warped and I know even if I do steam it because the fabric's twisted it's not really going to make much of a difference and I've had a practice with other stitches so the lightning bolt again it was twisted um twin needle tried to do a twin needle um I think the press of foot pressure is just too great for for stretch fabric like this now for chiffon I tend to use a size 60 needle Problem is on genoma machines, the feed dogs don't pull the fabric from the edge. And that's beautiful, that's come out really nicely. It's fed through the machine really well. Um, a fine fabric like this. I really didn't expect it to stitch from the edge and it really did. So again, I'm happy with the machine for chiffon. So there we go. This is the Hobbycraft 8100. Goes by other names in other shops at different prices. So just watch out for that. But on the whole, I've really been pleased with this machine. It's a computerized sewing machine. I tend not to love them. So it stitched up really well on denim. It sewed cottons really well. It's sewn applique, free motion. I'm really happy with the result on the chiffon and how it caught the chiffon from the very start but I didn't love the result on the stretch fabric. I tried it in so many different ways and I spent a long time trying to get the tension right, to get the needles right, to get the right thread, but I just couldn't quite get that perfect. So I think there's that's a little bit of thumbs down. So now the number of stitches on here is really good. They're not just pretty stitches, you actually have quite a number of utility stitches. And even though the manual didn't give me a comprehensive guide to what these stitches represent, it does give me a good guide on which stitches will be suitable for. Overall, it's great. All the functions work really well. I'm really pleased with the feed dogs. There's a lot of genome machines with five feed dogs on them are very weak. These are powerful. I'm really pleased with this machine. I like the stop start function. I like the needle up down. It has the slide control. The number of stitches a minute isn't amazing. It sews the denim fine, it sews the chiffon fine. 
I'm really pleased. Um, I don't think it would be perfect for leatherette or anything like that. I haven't tried leatherette, but that isn't really something you might want to buy a computer machine for. So I would definitely recommend this machine to a beginner, maybe to a child. It's not too powerful, it's not too strong. I'm not sure about advanced sewers and somebody who's skilled. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say it's for them, but it is a good buy and you are going to be able to stitch lots with it and have lots of fun.